All right, Adrian, so what are we gonna make? We're gonna make gumbo. Go oh, right on. Yeah. Nice. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. It's a long process. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all evening. We're not doing filet, though. No? No, we're okay. gonna make a traditional roux. It's your deal. All right. I like it. All right. So we got this big old Le Creuset Lodge. It's Lodge, <laughs> it's not Le Creuset. Um, and we got heat going. We got some heat going, yeah. Uh, what I'm gonna do is pour in oil. Most likely this is like a vegetable or a um, it's probably a vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. And we gotta just let it heat up a little bit. And what's so great is we're gonna make a roux and a roux takes a long time. If to, you do it right. If you do it right, yeah. and you have to pay attention to it. And yep. if you do not pay attention to roux, it will uh, betray you. It will, it, it's, <laughs> yes, yeah. It, it, will, it will betray you. And, um, but once you do it right, you're so grateful you did it right. Right, I usually make more than I need so I yeah. can put it away. <laughs> There's nothing like it. <laughs> because you know, like I said, I have four kids and so sometimes if you just look away one second, your you your roo's gone yeah. and you can't come back. You can't come back for that. And it's really bad because I, I don't even want to talk about it. Like, <laughs> you don't want to talk about you it might, because it's like- No, because it's trauma. It is, it's trauma because yeah. you, you and if you like painstakingly watched it and you're like, you're almost there, sure. you're almost there. And I mean, you're frying, literally you're frying flour. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're just gonna fly some, fry some flour. I don't, it's not the same, but when we camp, I'll make pancakes. So you, have, you got the batter prepared, you got everything, but you got this like crazy heat source, right? Right. And you, you put the pancakes on and you nothing like fresh pancakes while you're camping, you know? But same deal, it's fire and a, and a, and a cast iron pan. And you look away. Your family says, look at that raccoon or whatever it is. And you're like, I just, it's now carbon dating. Like there's no, we went from, it's almost perfect to it's, it's gone. Right. And yeah. I think the largest question, especially when you make roux, is like what color? Like oh, in the South or where I'm from is like you can tell somebody who they are if you can trust them by making gumbo. You're like if they make a gumbo. And if their gumbo is too light, you don't trust them. Interesting. You don't trust them. They, they don't have the patience to make gumbo, you know. But it's also like, you know, what do you know is the true color of gumbo? And it's always been for me uh, being told it has to be the color of my skin. So, you okay. know, it has to be me on a sun-kissed day <laughs> In the summer, right? So, okay. you know, I'm going to be a little darker. But, you know, try to get it as close to that chocolatey color as possible. And, you know, right now we're just kind of like it's emulsifying. It's getting there. It's going to get thicker. Yeah. And then literally I enjoy it because I look at it and you can, it's like you can see the little molecules of flour like frying and dancing in the oil. Um, and I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. But it'll get thicker, and don't get scared when it gets thicker. You just keep stirring. That was always my problem, was it would start to thicken up, and I would freak out. Why? I don't know. I was afraid. I was afraid. What color was it? Uh, it, would get, it would get dark. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out if I could trust you. Yeah. So, well, no, yeah. You, you can't regarding my gumbo making skills, because I've made gumbo, like, this many times. And, and I think with gumbo, I, I've had all different types of gumbo. And for me, gumbo has definitely been one of those traditions that anything goes, mm -hmm. you know? Totally. And as long as you have some of the basic things, like you have the Trinity, and we have some of that over, over here, and I'm trying to keep my eye on everything. But if you have that celery and that onion and those peppers in there, just to kick it off, and then you start going. Do you um, want me to swap trays? Yeah, you want to Yeah, wanna, like, absolutely. Swap? We'll use this one later. Yeah. So you've got easy access. Yeah, so you know, once you have this trinity of amazingness that you pop in here after your roux is done, you start adding those spices to it. And then it, it kind of gives me that nostalgic feeling of being back home. And um, usually it's so funny, I, I, don't, I don't usually eat gumbo in the wintertime, it's usually in the summer. And, oh, and I think that it's must because, be a southern thing. It will, you know, you start thinking about the freshness of the seafood, and if you're going to have crawfish, you're yeah, going to have crab, truly. and you know, uh, shrimp and things like that. Usually, we'll get it in the in spring, summer, sure. and so you'll, that's when I usually get gumbo. And so you can see it's starting to bubble, and this is what I'd like love to like see it when it starts getting really, really fiery, and I start seeing like I feel like I see the little molecules of flour dancing in that, <laughs> and it just keeps going. And do you use just like straight up King Arthur's or something? There's no I usually use King. Arthur's. Yeah. Um, it just depends on where you live in the South but there's if no, you're going to use a certain flour. Oh, uh, okay. But it's not like double zero or anything no, like that. No, this is just an all-purpose yeah. flour. Yeah. You know, and like I said, uh, gumbo is, you know, 
is use those leftovers and use use those leftovers that are in there. So, you know, I sometimes I have leftover sausage, you know, a chicken. I, I use part of a chicken and a whole chicken and a carcass. I'll throw the whole thing in there, oh, bones and all. Yeah. You know, it's uh, a, crab meat. It's a total, um, it's a peasant food, which is where all deliciousness comes from, and the using up of the extras. Right. So you have some flour left over after you make biscuits for the next couple of days, but not enough to make another batch of biscuits. Right. This is how we make. We got a little bit of oil. You know? We got a little bit of oil. Um, you know, and it, I've seen it used with bacon fat. I've seen it used with, you know, just the resonant of oils that you have around. Yeah. And then, and then, then making that thicker, making that roux, and and then you know this is just a process, right? So this is. This is like a 30 minute process, the 30 to 60 minute process, depending on how good an expert you are and how fast you move this thing around um, for it to get flour. Because I mean, to get to get darker, because literally the flour is just dancing in the oil. Right. So yeah. It's just frying around in the oil. And so it, it, it's expanding. It's getting thicker. But also at the same time, it's frying. And so as we're moving it you'll see it over time change color and get darker and get darker to the point sometimes people like it as dark as coffee. You, uh, like I said, you sometimes you can tell if it's a good roux just by the smell of the gumbo yeah. that they use. And you can tell if they use filet in it or, or if they did not. Hmm. Hmm. So every time I think of gumbo, I think of Leah Chase. Ah, oh, Leah Chase. Yeah. Wonderful. Owner of Dookie Chase, late, yep. late, late, the late G Leah Chase. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful person. Yeah. Got to, you know, got to meet her once in person. Um, tell it like it is, you know, very straightforward, but also inspirational. All right. Do you see? The wish her to turn It's beautiful. Color. Yeah. It's silky and you did that well. <laughs> nice. But this is, it's like you got to have an arm like Popeye. You know, you got to yeah. eat your spinach before this because you're going to keep going. And <laughs> like you, you just you get think, into the groove. You just keep going. And, and it's just, you know, when you're a mom, you just kind of just like look around real quick and you go right back to the pot. So yeah. if I'm not looking you in the eye, I don't mean. That's cool. I don't mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to it. I don't it. want it to burn. <laughs> I'm used to it. Because I tell you, it will betray you. Yeah. It will, it will betray you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, like I said, I've not made many roofs, but I do know that if I get cocky and I think, oh, the heat is just, it's fine. It's not too high. Like if I try and push it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just starting over. So I started smelling it and I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm talking. I'm going to, I'm going to turn it down just a little yeah. bit because yeah. I, I don't want it to betray me. And then that's what you use as a film. Then it just betrayed me, you know. And it's all, <laughs> it's all burned. And be like, don't do this, you know. That that new meme where you say, oh no, oh no, no, no. Yeah. That's what I don't want. So. So what have you got to your right? What else are we gonna put in? Cool. Yeah. So we got that trinity. We have a lot of. What those is the spicy. trinity? Oh yeah. So we have the onions. Mm -hmm. We have the celery. We have the bell pepper. And then we start doing those additives of spices, which we got kind of over here in the corner. And you want to start that? Sure, I'm going to put you sure. to work. <laughs> so you call it a trinity. I'm familiar with the term the French trinity, which is onion, uh, celery, and carrot. But yes. you've got onion, celery, and bell pepper. This I is a new I think you could form. switch it. I mean, the trinity could be switched up. Can Let me you tell mess you. with that's like a I mean, that's French. I'm not French. No, it's not. <laughs> Word I'm not up. French. You know, I think... I mean, some of those main ingredients that you have at home. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know about your home, but my home, I make sure I have a bell pepper, some celery. I also have carrots and onions. Like those are some of the root things always that I definitely around. always, yeah. you always. always have them around, you know, always. and always ready to chop. Always you know? flour, brown sugar, sugar, like vanilla, like a couple. Right. Yeah. Flour. Yeah. I even I have emergency flour just in case I like. <laughs> oh my gosh, I ran out of flour, and I'm like, oh, I got that emergency flour. Emergency sugar. Yeah, yep. I have that too. Yep. Yeah. You know, yep. this is how it works at home. I just pass it on, and I get to yep. do all the talking and dancing, right? Lots of butter. So lots of. Oh man, yeah, I ran out of butter once. Let's have let's have that yeah. conversation. Yeah. And emergency butter, right? Luckily, so, <laughs> you're close to a place where you can get a lot of butter. I I am, you know, and it's really funny. I'm lactose intolerant, so I you know I'm very careful. I mean, your butter and cheese is completely different yeah. <laughs> than a lot of places, like a lot of other places. So, you know, um, some of the other things we have there, uh, we got smoked paprika, we got a little cayenne, salt, pepper. We got thyme dried. Oh, this one's not dried. This is fresh. Fresh hey. thyme. We got a little bit of chives and we have parsley. So these are all going to go in at some point. As some, you know, once you once you get a bigger muscle and this turns like the yeah. color of me, we will 
add in the vegetables. And, and, and I think that's great magic when you watch these vegetables go into the roux and what happens when, when, you, when you put those vegetables into the roux. Right on. Wow, Adrian, that's like, that's like Maybelline. You gotta, yeah, yeah. kind of close. You huh? gotta, yeah. I said, in the summer, when I get a tan, uh -huh. this is what we're looking at. Got the fire going, I have it turned up a little bit, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to move this a little bit So around. you're happy with this? I'm happy with this color, very happy with this color. Yeah, right on. I was a, you know, like I said, it can go darker. You can see like, people say like chicory sometimes, you uh -huh. know, it just depends. And I think it also like the level of darkness also kind of tells you how they grew up and how dark it can get. Because at some time people, if it did go past that burning point, you still used it. <laughs> You still used it, you know, because I mean, at, at, at some point, <laughs> you know, it's. No, so we're keeping the baby and the bathwater. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead and keep that, you know, or, you know, it, it, it also, I feel like I know the era, right? Like, right. I felt like I grew up in the Depression, you know, like there yeah. were, you know, gumbo, I think was a sacred thing, because something like fried chicken, I mean, fried chicken wasn't eaten every day. Yeah. It was something that definitely you you had like the spring chicken. It was like the biggest and the brightest in the spring chicken or, right. or like right at the beginning of the summer. That's why um, everybody's like, oh, you make fried chicken. I was like, ironically, I don't make it too much in my house. I, yeah. I, I don't. First of all, I don't want my house smelling like chicken all day. Amen. <laughs> but yep. but it, Which it is, is kind of a fabulous thing if you plan it right. Oh, if you plan it right, right? Yeah. yeah but I really think like fried chicken is more of my is more of a summer thing. Yeah. But um, the same thing goes with us. Like sometimes you just need to, you you got to keep it, and sometimes you don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, the crazy thing that people don't realize, with especially with chicken, like there's so many. You know, there's something like seven times the number of chickens on the planet right now than there are people. That wasn't the case until the 60s, where mm. people who raised chickens for eggs started raising chicken for chickens. Mm. And that business expanded from Pennsylvania all the way down the East Coast. And obviously prices went down and availability went up and things like that. But, um, you know, getting a chicken was kind of a special thing. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, so, I still consider it a special thing because I, I still get my chickens from farmers. Yeah. So, right. and I mean, it, it, sometimes it's difficult to get chicken. It, it, it can be really difficult to get chicken or you are like doing this like chicken, you know, chess playing game where you have to like find, you're looking for a certain amount of chickens and, and you can't find them all. You got to go to more than one one chicken farmer, right? Wow. Um, because they can't provide you everything you need. So. Yeah. You always gotta keep it looking. Oh, I just put some bell peppers in here just to I test it. I saw that. So I'm gonna. And what are they telling you, these bell peppers? These bell peppers are telling me to put the rest of them in there. Okay, they're join the party. Sizzling on the edges, like yeah. little flotilla of flavor. This is the fun part. This is the magical part where you get to see it. So that's around. so you got to name this stuff: peppers and then celery. Oh, onion. sorry, celery. Yeah, that's okay. We got celery. I get excited. Now we're going like, with onion. That's okay. That's why I'm here. In there. Going with onions? Yeah, so we're going with onions. And so you're going to see it kind of like fry around, and plus you're going to see it get thicker, right? Yeah. So you're going to see this happening really quick. And it's, it's also frying the vegetables. You have that oil in there, right? The oil's hot. The flour's in between the molecules. But we're not oil. worried about browning these onions, necessarily. No, we're, we're worried about just giving a little softness to okay. those onions. Okay. Like, we're not trying to make transparency we're because... We're sweating them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a little bit. You know, we don't, we're still trying not to burn everything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We don't want to burn. Amen. Sometimes I just give it up because, like I said, gumbo takes a while, and they're going to cook. They're going to cook through because we got to, like, boil and stew down the vegetables with the vegetable broth and such. Yeah. So, you know, at this point, I have those beautiful vegetables that were finely chopped in here. If you didn't see that. I did. They were beautifully <laughs> finely chopped by expert culinary instructors. TV magic, man. Yeah. TV magic. Yeah. Got to give them credit. I told you it would be fun if you came. You wouldn't have to do any work. Oh, my goodness. The work, man. But I'm working right now. I'm, like, stirring. This is a lot of... So you're going to have just a whole video of me just stirring. I can stir. stir. I can stir you for stir? you. Sure. Okay. Sure. You stir. You do and your then, thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you, they're going to have to, like, fasten this up so you can see us, like, doing, like, right. super stirs, right. right? Yeah. Time lapse? Yeah. Do a time lapse. Sure. Like a Benny Hill kind of thing. Where I'm going to add some spices on you, okay? I just dated myself. <laughs> So what, uh, what is it like cooking southern comfort food in a northern Wisconsin town? And like you answered this before, go ahead with the peppery, because yeah. I'm Hungarian and so I'm just gonna like just have a moment. Um, <laughs> I bet those are cayenne. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah. that's fine, that's your southern roots. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like when have you put, pepper. okay, pepper, <laughs> sure. 
That's what started the spice trade. It wasn't yep. nutmeg, people. It was really pepper. Yeah. Um, wh like, wh have there ever been any things that you've done with a particular southern Time. accent? Time. <laughs> Time. Okay. <laughs> a nod, a little nod to the French, yeah. right? Yeah. And now stock. Yeah, stock. We're gonna chicken go stock. stock. Okay. This is this is okay. Broiled chicken stock. We're gonna. There's a real deal here too. This is a real deal. Some yeah. actual chickens. Yeah. Gelatinous. Yeah. The good stuff, right? All that schmaltz. We love it. Yeah. I'm um, going to eat all of this. Huh? I'm going to eat all yeah, of this. Yeah, we're going to eat all of it. Now you're going to have to do some really good stirring because now we just added cold stock to I know, it, right? So now right? we have the flour just kind of said, I don't want to move. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So my question is, have you, you ever like grooved on some southern action of your food at the cafe that you thought, mm, that is just the way that we made it at home. That is fantastic. But your audience was like... Uh, I don't know. Um, um, I think one of the things we had to really push on them was grits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the way that we did it is that we have a, uh, we call it the uptown breakfast. So like the classic breakfast. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to like Denny's or other places, you get, you go, you get bacon, eggs and toast. Yeah. Right. I said, no, you're not getting toast. You're going to get grits. And so. And when they're done right, light and fluffy, whole. Oh. When they're done right. It's really something. When you when it's done right. Yeah. Um, it better be damn good bread that you're gonna choose over that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, Instead you know, this, I don't think people know. I'm gonna throw some, I'm gonna throw some, throw some garlic, garlic in? in there. Yeah. Okay, you could do um, that. So, it, 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 I feel like sometimes you have to educate, I did not say train, but educate the mm -hmm. community. I didn't on think you said food. train. <laughs> On, uh, but you also got to be a little, a little forceful. Like you just got to give them a little nudge to try something new with intention. With intention, because <laughs> because if you if you don't, they'll never do it. So did you have to take? No, so this is like this is menu semantics. Like you call it your uptown breakfast, but you don't say with blah blah blah. You just leave grits off, right? No, the grits is on there. You, 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 yeah, you 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 can see them contemplating. Like, do I really <laughs> want to try grits? Do I want toast? Do I want extra bacon or potatoes? Where's your hash browns? I don't have hash browns. That's like sacrilegious. Yeah. You know, we had hash browns at one time, but those things are so messy. And, and <laughs> they're, they're just messy, right? You know, and and we're slinging hash browns everywhere. Hash browns well, are everywhere. And most diners don't have the time to get them right and crispy, to be honest. And that's my problem. Yeah, I like why really... do half-assed half browns? I don't want them. Okay. So then we can be friends because yeah. I like crispy hash brown. I like yeah. soft in the middle yeah. and crispy. Right. And if that's the very delight point of it. Right. Yeah. So I want to make sure I make a plate that I'm that I'm able to serve my mama or my grandma. Yeah. You know, if if you get a plate and and I send it out and I wouldn't even serve my nana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And and it was getting to the point like there's so many hash browns. I was like, we're gonna take that off. And let me tell you, my staff was like, <gasps> really? <laughs> You're gonna take off hash browns? And I was like, we, they're gone. Yeah. They're not coming back. Yeah. And when we switched and we decided to do grits, my staff had never eaten grits. My friend, I had staff that never had collard greens. I had one call it color greens. She like wrote color greens. I was like, what's colored greens? And it was collard greens. And, and having that conversation and making them taste and sit down, you know, it goes beyond the having the tasting and sitting down. It yeah. goes on like grandma style, you need to try this. You know, like pull it yeah. out and be like, hey, hey staff, you know, or like whoever, come here, you need to try this. You know, and and tell me about it. What do you think about that? And how do you, how would you describe it to somebody, right? right, right. Um, instead of me saying, this is what it is and this is how you cook it and this is what you do for it. Mm -hmm. That's not what I want. I want. I want my staff to be able to understand it in their own dialect, in their own way of describing it to somebody because I don't want them to go, uh, uh, it's like this and this is what my boss said. And then they can, sell it, they can sell it at the table. This, well, and they also can say they had it, so they have a... Oh, this Volrath whisk, by the way, is amazing. Yes. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. One of the better whisks out there. I mean, seriously. I, I think so. I think it'll whisk itself. It's doing its thing. It's holding up. My hand isn't hot. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. yeah. It, how's your arm? Uh, it's still... It's good. <laughs> it's good? It's good. All right, we can stop. Really? I just let you do that for, yeah. for TV magic. Cool. I just left you there. Yeah. So this is going to boil. And we will need the chicken soon. Boom. Yeah. yeah you can put some. Okay. And it's going to boil. It's going to get thicker. 
because that's what that roux will do. Mm -hmm. And then um, soon enough, we will be able to add the chicken to that. And then we're going to add the sausage? Then we'll add the sausage last. And then I heard we have shrimp, so we're, we're going to do some shrimp too. And like I said, it's to, it's a, it's to throw in there. It's like I sometimes I open my refrigerator and I'm like, what do I got? And yeah, then, totally. <laughs> that's and the, I'm like, that will taste great, you know, with gumbo. That's the essence of gumbo. Well, and it's also the, like, the pungent smell. Like it rolls through your house. And, mm -hmm. and like my family knows like gumbo is being made for dinner tonight. But I also, with gumbo, I eat cornbread. With, mm. with my gumbo. Makes sense. Yeah. It's like, I think it's like the two and two. You, you gumbo. need it. Yeah. Gumbo for me is patience and time. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of patience and time when it comes to making this. This is an all day thing. This is like something you start real early. In this the is like, well, to me, it seems like, and I could be wrong in my history, but because it was like red beans and rice was the Tuesday dish. Sunday was the, we had our great meals on Fridays and Saturdays. It's what's left over. Yep. We're all together. We went to church. Everyone's home. We're going to get hungry eventually, but what do we have at the end of the week? And it goes in a pot. And it goes in a pot. It's a one, it's a one, one pot hookup. Yeah. So we got a little chicken. We got a little rice. We got a little oil. We got a little flour. We got some seasonings. We got, you know, and, and the matriarch often cooking is not stressed. Right. Because it's, she's not reaching for, you know, she's not meal planning basically. Right. And this is, a, and, and like I said, this is like the leftover. Um, I mean, from this this stage, you can do it different ways. You can boil your chicken and pull your chicken from your bone and use that broth to put into your into your gumbo. Right, right. Or I mean, there's plenty of times where people will just put the raw chicken inside of the gumbo and just let it go and let yeah. it simmer for 20, 40 minutes. Um, and and you know that's patience, that's time. You know, you you just spent all that time on that roux. Why make it go faster, right? right so right. this is really like melting it off the boat and, and doing 30, 30, 40 minutes in the back and just let it go at a slow temperature and then put and then put the chicken in. It's like when I do a goulash, like I build up mm. the flavor mm -hmm. that's tomato based. Mm -hmm. Maybe I brown the chicken off. Maybe I don't have time. Right. And then I put it in and it's just like, you're, and you just let it go, right? Yeah, you just let it go. You just sit, you come back and you check yeah. it every once in a while. Yeah. And um, like for me, like, old school gumbo, the bones are in there. Yeah. Like the, bo the bones are in there, the crab meat, the, the claw, every, everything goes in that thing. Right. You know, the right. shells go in that thing. A lot and of you're, flavor in there. A lot of flavor. It's like, it's like that buildup of stock, you know, yeah. and, it's, and, it, and it's all just melding and meshing together to create this goodness. Yeah. And it, it's something that you like, you just let it sit and let it roll. You yeah. know, when you got to this point and you've, and you've made this, you're good. Yeah. You're really good. And when you're like making a sausage and chicken gumbo, your sausage go in last, your shrimp goes in last. You just let your chicken roll. Yeah. And you just let it go. Okay? Right? All some right. Chicken in? Let's put some chicken in. And like I said, some people are some people like it to cook the chicken off before mm -hmm. and, and shred it. I like to let it shred in in there itself and kind of just pull off the bone. I itself. like the uh, I like the fell apart from heat instead of my fingers. Right. I'm with you. Right. Yeah. I like my fingers. Yeah. I no, don't, for I, don't, sure. I don't I don't I don't want them to burn. You I'm know, not... I, I don't have that much feeling in my hands anyway, right? <laughs> Been cooking too long. So uh, did you like how do I say this? What gives you the right to open up a cafe uh, when you'd never cooked professionally before or even had a business well, I guess you had a bakery, but it wasn't like you were serving directly. Right. You know, but that takes some chutzpah or stupidity. Is that, is, is that or, a, I don't know that word. It's a Yiddish word. It means like some, like, uh, strength of character and ballsy. Oh, I think it, ballsy, ballsy. right? Yeah, it's, ballsy. It's, 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 it's Yiddish ballsy. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, leaping before you look kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I'm going to turn that off and then turn it back on. There you go. There we go. Just it just likes to click to let yeah. us know it's there. Okay, well, ladies, yeah, it's ladies. friendly. I mean, for me, I think what we, what I did was ballsy, yes, and I don't have a culinary background in in the field of work, but you know, I've been cooking since I was eight. Everybody tells you, oh, I've been cooking since I was this age. I've been cooking with since I was eight. Let me tell you, my first meal, it was a burger. It was raw. You know, I made it for the family. It was cooked on the outside, but raw in the middle. But it didn't stop me. You know, yeah. it made me go even further to learn more. I've watched my mother cook. We didn't live close to our family. Um, so 
my mom would call my grandmother and she would cook at the same time. And, you know, we got to talk to my grandmother, watch my mom cook or cook with her, eat the, you know, eat the cookie dough, figure, you know, figuring out this whole world. But I was also a latchkey kid, Hmm. you know, and I was the oldest. So it was me taking responsibility of my sister. What are we going to eat when you get home? Right. You know, finding an interest in food. I mean, I love watching PBS. I love watching all the food show. I had a, you know, I had the old, the kitchen window where you can see into the dining room and I would play around like I had my own cooking show and make the voices like Julia Child and, you know, and have <laughs> fun, you know, and, and I always, cooking has always been a part. I mean, when I met my husband, I cooked, I was, as soon as I met him in person, we, I cooked a meal, you know, yeah. it's like, it's always been a part of my life and food is a part of everybody's life. It's just depends on what story it plays, right? Right. And for me, it just played a real center part of of my story and um, and where I go. And so having, I hear it bubbling. Was, it, was it a latent dream that someday you could have a restaurant despite all of your work in architecture and urban planning? Hell no. I wasn't <laughs> expecting to have a restaurant. <laughs> I wasn't, I, you know, the bakery, the bakery in Austin was under stress. I was baking while doing my PhD work. I yeah. was, I was a student. I was TAing. I was also working for the city and I had to put my stress somewhere and I had a kid. Right. And so I put it towards baking and making candy, I, like just the curiosity and the science of it all. So I did, I did that. And then people were like, okay, I can't, I can't eat any more of your food without paying for it. They started feeling guilty. So I was like, what is this, a business? Let's go check out what uh, small oh. business. You know, so oh. I went to the small business. I, you know, being in the city, you know the department. So I went to the small business. I was like, how do you start a business? Here's what I make. I literally took a box of food and said, I make this. Can this be a business? And I bought a business plan because I was like, well, if this is a business, how do you do a business plan? Right. And so it was all these questions that just snowballed and then I walked out with a business, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I walked out with a business, walked out with an empty box and, and said, okay, I can do this. And, and, but the way that I did it is that it was on my schedule, mm. you know? So mm-hmm. you can only, you ordered on Wednesday and you picked up on the weekend cause I got shit to do during yeah. the week, you know? Right. And so it, it came to this point where it was being very successful and it was a lot of work and people recognized us. People lined up before we could even put our tents up on the farmer's market. You know, we started becoming an anchor at the farmer's market. People started recognizing our muffins or recognizing certain things that we made. Um, and, and it was, it was great. I mean, I could have kept doing that. So Austin is sad to have lost you to La Crosse, oh, Wisconsin. I <laughs> well, it sounds like it. If people were queuing up at the farmers yeah, market, yeah, I saw people messaging me today about uh, yeah. yeah about uh, the, about what we had there, and you know, but it's it, it's okay because I think there is time for transition, and I think there there's times where things need to end and things need to evolve into other things. Yeah. So, um, do you use any of those recipes at the cafe? Two, two, only two, only two. Wow, only two. But like I said, things have evolved. We changed things around. And you also got to think about your demographics. Yeah. You know, uh, are they really going to want what they eat down south up here? You know, yeah. and sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. So what are the two that survived? Chicken and waffle. <laughs> that survived. Yeah, That's, chicken and waffle. But that was something your bakery did? Was it chicken? Would do? Yeah, at the farmer's market. Okay. Yeah, we, we brought hot food on cold days. And so we was like, what if we do chicken and waffle? There were, because my husband was like, your chicken is so amazing. And I'm just like, it's chicken. Yeah. And, um, you know, bringing a setup of deep fryers. We had one and now we have like three big yeah. deep fryers sitting there, you know. Imagine the power in the generator you needed for that, you know. And, and waffle makers. We had six waffle makers, double waffle makers, you know, just going at it. And yeah. This was a weekend thing that we did. We it used to be my husband and I, and then we started having staff. And you know, <laughs> you had staff in the in the commercial prep kitchen, and you had staff there. And and it it so was this turned into an, an, an endeavor. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. And you know, people were like, "But isn't she? Doesn't she work for the city?" And you know, right, like, isn't right. she a student? And, you know, and yeah. And then she has a business. But uh, you know, for me, 
I will always be thankful for what I learned, but the one thing I cherished the most was the relationships that I created with the farmers mm -hmm. because it was mm -hmm. beyond that, oh, I go to the farmer's market and I go see this farmer's for food. Yep. I got to know their family. I got to know their children. I got yeah. to watch their children grow up. Their children were growing up with my kids, yeah. you know? So they created this bond and this relationship that I looked at farmers differently. And I understood the impact of the dollar yep. when it comes to a farmer. So, you know, my farmers will get my dollar before anyone yep. else will. And I know where the product comes from. I could go to their farm and see, you know, see the chickens walking around and see the pigs and the yeah. cows and everything and, and, and look at the produce and be like, yeah, I'm going to eat you tomorrow. You know, yeah. like those, those are things that you, you don't get the chance to understand at the grocery store how many hands it's gone through mm -hmm. to get to your plate. And um, the farmer's market, I'm able to meet the person who picked it that right. day, that morning to bring it to the farmer's market. Yeah. I understand that. All the years that I did in broadcast, <clears throat> I don't miss any of the award shows or the blah, 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 or whatever, but I do miss the people, mm. the farmers, the purveyors, the firsthand experience and relationships. Yeah. I think it's I, I think it's one of the most important things because, like I said, it's, it's the food, right? The food tells a story, but it, the ingredients also tell a story from from the time they, they, they plowed and put it into the mm -hmm. ground until they pulled it from the ground. And, and it goes from that hand to being cleaned or to being boxed and being brought to the market and then into your hands, into your plate. You know, there's so many people that are involved in that one carrot. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't recognize that. But yeah. this is a great, you know, it's a great opportunity to talk about it. And I get so excited when I see a great carrot <laughs> or a great piece of meat because I go, that's mine. Right. Nobody else is ever going to get to eat this exact carrot. Nobody's ever going to get to taste this exact carrot again. It's a moment in time. It's a moment in time, right? The beauty. So if you look at my Instagram, sometimes it's a picture of a carrot. Sometimes it's a picture of a handful of um, lemongrass or something because yeah. it's like, that's mine. And you, no one else is going to get to experience that unless you were sitting at my table and, and eating it with me. But this is just, this is something that I cherish and I should appreciate and which I hope other people do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's just rolling. It it's smells beautiful. so good, but yeah. I know you can't eat it yet because it got raw chicken in it, but it's just like. It's cooking. It's cooking, and I just wanted to let it pull off the bone on its own. Mm -hmm. So we've got this brown loveliness. Yeah. Silken, velvety, gushy loveliness. Bones right. removed, mostly. Bones removed, mostly. We're hope, we're who we hope. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just watch yourself. Uh, yeah. And now we put in sausage or shrimp? I would vote shrimp. Yeah, I vote shrimp, too. Okay, because yeah. less fat on that shrimp. <laughs> less, fat, <laughs> less fat on that shrimp. I'm going Ooh, to... Oh, those are some pretty... This is some, some pretty big shrimp. And they're, they smell good, too. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and toss these shrimp. So what was your home... Like, what was your home meal? Like, your... Please, Mom, make this. This, this makes me happy. This makes me feel like home... Meal growing up. I mean, I grew up in I grew up in the '80s, so you know, it was all about TV and watching what was, you know, it was about Velveeta, really, right? It was about craft <laughs> and and then it was about uh, Hamburger Helper. Remember, everybody wanted that glove, you know, do a little Michael Jackson with the glove. The yeah. action happening there, but you know, some of the things that I remember was like Sunday morning breakfast and like biscuits. And like my mom making biscuits, and and beyond that, it was also my grandmother too. Right, so my grandmother, um, we we would know, you know, it's time to get ready for church because the gospel music would come on, right? And she would be, I, I I thought I was busy, but she would be like starching pants at the same time, getting ready for church, <laughs> you know, her hair and rollers, music playing, and she'd be making Sunday dinner at the same time before we walked out the door. Because wow. if you've ever been to a black church. It's not gonna be five minutes or 20 minutes. You're gonna right. be there for a couple hours, right? right? And so dinner has to be like simmered and ready and bread made and things yeah. like that. So, you know, it's always being around that moment of watching 
her dance and put these things together and it's going to miraculously come together when we get home at around two o'clock at two three o'clock and and she's doing the final touches on it and you know <laughs> I, it, it's it's those it's those meals where the hands are involved and in like in the making of the bread and in the making of the biscuits and cutting them out and really understanding how delicate that work was mm -hmm. and to create these beautiful fluffy things that um, that you're gonna slap butter and everything else you can find preserves on. You know, I even remember my great grandmother, my great grandmother made preserves and all my life I just wanted to make her peach preserves like that. I just, I just knew this is what I wanted in my life to make sure I was able to learn how to make that. And, and have I, you been? Oh yeah. I yeah. did it this past year. I think I talked about it a thousand times, like, but these preserves are amazing, you know, and you don't want to eat them all because you're afraid. Right. You, you won't know, be you able to recreate it again. Won't be able to recreate it yep. again. Yeah. I know that feeling. But it's, um, it's those moments in time. It, it wasn't about the food. It was about watching mm -hmm. and watching those things being made and really understanding how those ingredients came together to make this beautiful dish. Mm. Those were my favorite moments. Um, and then you, being able to recreate these moments with my kids. And I mean, food has ran in my family for ugh, a, a thousand times. I have an aunt named Aunt Cookie. You know, I have, a, I have an aunt we called Aunt Butch. And, you know, and it was because she butchered food. Like, literally, it's like she, she it wasn't her name, but we just called her. I've always known her as Aunt Butch. And she never cooked. She was like the first person to ever take me to a big box star. And, and you know, during the summer, we would come home and she's like, get what you're going to eat for the summer, you know? And it's like Hot Pockets. Yes. You know, my mom will never let me do this, you know? But, it, but she could make a mean root beer float. You know, so it's just those little things that the, those memories uh, around food. My grandmother was the cookbook editor oh. of the church. So um, she added t three cookbooks. Sure. And so she gave each girl three cookbooks from the time that she's edited those. So, you know, and they all have some person in my family wrote a recipe and they're yeah. even mom, but you know, we're very careful about those recipes. Uh, but you know, my family is like written and my family's really known for not writing recipes. We're very oral and mm -hmm. you have to watch. And we have this thing is if you, if you're making something that's home traditionally, and especially my grandmother, she makes a wonderful pound cake and you can't remember that ingredient and you call home, they would be like, huh, it seems like you need to come home. <laughs> Because you must not have been home long enough because you don't remember what's in that, right? So right. And they're not going to tell you over the phone. And you're like in Wisconsin and they're in Texas and you're yeah. like, is it a tablespoon or a teaspoon? And they're like, you just haven't been home. So you, you know, you've got to find your way home to get back to your roots, to understanding wow. where this is from. And they're really adamant. They won't tell you. Yeah. They won't tell you. So you're wow. either going to have something that's overly sweet or under, you know, <laughs> but that, that to me brings us closer, you know? And so my kids are thoroughly involved in the kitchen. If you see one of my virtual demos, you'll see kids walking around behind. You'll see my teenager I come in. I did see one and I did see that. <laughs> You'll see a teenager come in and look and smell and want to be able, you know, like, can I yeah. have some? You know, he's like, he's, he's in his room. He comes up. Can I have some? Go back down in his room. You know, it's just, it's part of life. It's family. So what are you looking for? The pink or sh uh, the shrimp are pinking up? Yep, they're pinking up. They're doing out. really good. They're doing really well. In yep. fact, I'm about to um, to put in some of this sausage. sausage -ify. Yeah. Okay. So we got this beautiful andouille sausage. Ooh, it wanted to jump on its own. Yeah. So it just went in there. Man, this is going to be good. And you put that in absolute last. Absolute last. Why? Well, because it, it, uh, this one has a little bit more fat, but I don't want it to get toughened up. I want it, I want it just to be warm. Mm -hmm. I just want it to warm up in here. Got it. Got it. So, and this is beautiful. That is a beautiful gumbo. And it just makes me want to eat it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I like to put, like... My onions and, and, and a little bit, I'll put a little parsley in, but then I like to top it with a little parsley at the end. Mm -hmm. um, one, because the color, look at that color in yeah, the green. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna toss some of that in and I'm gonna turn the flame down, really, I'm gonna turn it off. And then the chicken shredding. I mean, this is like, as it's soon just, as I smell this, it's like home. The chicken is, my grandmother had this expression that it was fall. <laughs> it was an excuse, really, when something didn't work, but that it was falling apart from goodness. Ah. Oh. <laughs> but that's I truly. I think it just gave up and said, "I'm going to take a that's bath." Right. Right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a come. 
yes. to come. Yeah, and I love green onions. Green onions. I'm gonna throw some in there. Okay. And I like to throw it on top because it gives it like, like that, that freshness bite in it when you when we put it all together. And then we have a gumbo. And we got a gumbo. We got a gumbo. And so the only thing we're missing is rice. And we lay, you know, and, it, and this has been done several ways and there's probably controversy and I don't want to fight versus putting the rice in your gumbo versus if you're laying the gumbo on the rice. Okay, so well, I know how I, where do you lay? I, I, I lay it on the rice. Uh, amen. We can still I, be friends. Yes, I yeah. lay it on the rice because I like to dictate yeah. how much rice I get. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Well, versus, something yes. happens when you got an amazing... Well, you bought land for 40 acres and a mule in Carolina's rice country. When you have a perfectly done rice, why would you just throw it into a broth that just destroys all of that great, mm -hmm. fluffy, crispy, everything going on flavor-wise? Like, you know, it just doesn't, that doesn't and it, sense. It's just the ratio. Yeah. It's also like the ratio of how much gumbo to rice. And I really... It's a pasta uh, sauce. Gumbo to there you go. rice. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Butter to bread. There's a thing here. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm at home. I'm just using the spatula, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Just going to use the spatula to make sure it's stirred up. It's but a solid is... Volrath spatula. Okay. So you got some rice here, chef. Hey, let me unwrap it. I do. It. I do. Let's plate this up. Let's make some room here. Yeah, let's make some room. Oh, that's some good basmati. Yeah, it smells good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to plate up right here? I will. Okay. Here's a fancy Volrath spoon. Sturdy. You want to Stur do it? No, 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 oh. no. I'm not stealing your thunder. <laughs> we got a nice I'm, sturdy spoon. I'm not stealing your 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 rice moves. So do you do? Well, this is going to be very telling. Hmm. Do you do kind of a well? Do you do the 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 general oh. spread of rice? Mm, no. You know? I I usually like to do put my rice in the middle, and then um, kind of a like, like a little a, dome, like a small you, dome, right? Little dome, and then you are, then you're gonna do a well, or you're gonna do just a round. Oh, I'm putting it all over. Right? Oh my God! Okay. I'm put, <laughs> okay. I'm like, okay. Well, I'm not trying to see rice. This is yeah. a rice dish. This is like, this is this is gumbo, right? This was so. This kind of like how you played up was a very interesting moment for my wife and I when we started cooking together. Uh huh. You know, because it says a lot about a person and their traditions. Well, I think it also depends on what I'm plating, right? So like- if Well, totally, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm at home, I'm not, I'm really not looking for pretty, right? I'm making a mess in box, you know? <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm, and I would literally probably get talked about if I'm like making, you know, trying to make gumbo pretty, right? Like gumbo is pretty on its own, but like trying to like, let me show you a little bit of rice. Paul Perdone would say, wait a minute. Gumbo is beautiful. Yeah, it, it, he'll survive, you know, eating this. And I literally, like, smother it, right? Yeah. In, in there. Because like, you don't even know that there's rice in there. You don't even know there's rice in no. there. No, do we need a little... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I got a little excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is... There you go, it. Chef. No, let, no, no, let me these. Let me finish. You forgot these. <laughs> you forgot these, right? Adrian Lipscomb. <laughs> Thank you for arguing with me about gumbo <laughs> and how we, how we ate it and played it up. But uh, it's it's delicious. Thanks for cooking yeah. and talking with me. Thank you so much yeah. for inviting me. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.